let's review the relevant stress components in a pipe section in more detail, starting with the radial stress. We've seen that the radial stresses caused by pressure can be neglected for thin walled piping. It is important to realize that only the pressure load causes an overall radial stress in our piping geometry. No other load will result in such an overall radial stress. It is only the pressure load that contributes and we already concluded that this contribution can be neglected, so we will set it to zero. Next, let's evaluate the hoop stress. The pressure causes a hoop stress that is calculated by PD over 2T. Also for the hoop stress, it is the pressure only that contributes. No other load causes an overall stress in the circumferential direction to a piece of piping. This is different for the axial stress. We've seen that the pressure contributes to the axial stress according PD over 4T, but also other loads like external axial forces can cause an axial stress. An example could be the weight loads of connecting pipe segments. This contribution can generally be calculated as the external axial force divided by the cross-sectional area of the pipe. Additionally, bending moments can cause axial stresses. If we consider a top view of a pie piece to which a bending moment is applied, we find compressive stresses on one side and tension stresses on the other side, similar to a beam under bending. On the compressive side the stresses are negative and on the tension side the stresses are positive. Similar to a beam under bending, these bending stresses are calculated by multiplying the bending moment with y and dividing with i, in which y is the distance from the neutral axis and i is the second moment of area. We can find the maximum stresses at the outer edges of the geometry. In our case, the outer radius, RO. Typically, RO and I are combined in the equation and defined as Z, the section modulus of this specific geometry. These three loads all contribute to the axial stress value in the pipe, and the total stress is the sum of all three. The stresses considered so far are the normal stress directions, but for pipe stress assessment, also the torsion stress needs to be considered, which is a shear stress. Torsion stress is caused by torsion moments on the piping that tends to twist the pipe in opposite directions. Let's consider a horizontal piece of piping for which the weight is supported. If this segment continues under an angle to another horizontal segment, after which it runs vertically, any displacement from the vertical run for example due to thermal expansion, results in a torsion moment on the initial pipe run. Such torsion moments are denoted as MT, and the associated torsion stress can be calculated using the equation MT divided by 2 times Z, in which Z is the section modulus again. We now have an overview of all relevant stresses in piping but we'll leave out the radial stress, as this can be neglected for thin walled piping. We can categorize the loads that cause these stresses as loads that are independent of the pipe routing in the system, which is only the pressure, and loads that are dependent on the pipe routing in the system, which are the external axial force, the bending moment, and the torsion moment. When starting with the design of a piping system, the exact routing is often not known yet, but the design pressure is. Therefore, the selection of the pipe thickness is commonly based on the pressure. And as we have seen, the critical stress direction of a pressurized piece of piping is the hoop stress. It is therefore that most equations that are used to calculate the required wall thickness in a pipe system are related to the equation for the hoop stress, so PD over 2T.